Fallout New Vegas is one of the great games of all time. I mean, I enjoyed it and I've never enjoyed anything. Now, I played it for the first time last year, or, well, I played probably like half an hour of it maybe six years ago, but I was put off, it was like really ugly and it handled terribly and the version that I downloaded, uh, I couldn't get to not be in Russian. Now this game is made by Obsidian, which means that they negotiated a really bad deal for themselves, got really ambitious in the planning stage, and then barely managed to get it over the finish line. And it's built on Bethesda's engine, which means that it is a bug infestation. So before I started playing last year, I wanted to find just like a little mod list, or like a, I wanted to find something that was just vanilla but better, uh, and I couldn't find that. Uh, because the story and the art style are really great and unique, but the problem is it looks like arse and plays like arse. So I've come up with a list that is the vanilla but better list for people who are playing it for the first time or trying to uh, nostalgivate themselves and trick themselves into believing that it is the game that they remember in their imagination. Before you even get to think about rooting through Nexus mods for every possible mod in the world, you have to fix the game. Some engine fixes, some bug fixes, some tweaks, some restored content, and it's surprising how much you can change the game just by playing with the settings in this bad boy here. When you look at mods, everyone is obsessed with textures. Now, it's one thing if you're artfully, faithfully recreating textures that look like they belong in the world, but there is nothing I despise more than shoving a photorealistic picture of a car onto eight polygons. That being said, you should grab EXE. Now, if I've offended you and you're going, Caleb, you idiot, I need the textures! Um, calm down. There are some upscaled vanilla options, which are admittedly pretty nice. And that's it for textures, that's it. Now, EMBs, if done right, can be a massive improvement over the vanilla game. And if done wrong, they can be distracting and performance intensive. And they're usually done wrong. What it is, is a tool that lets you hijack a step in the render process and apply your own post-processing. Uh, they get kind of a bad rap online for being oversaturated, over-contrasted, too dark and laggy. And it's true, most of the presets out there are oversaturated, over-contrasted, too dark and laggy. But it doesn't have to be this way. For color, EMB uses palettes. Uh, now, I don't understand palettes, so I found a bit of code that lets you use LUTs instead. And what a LUT is, is just like a more complex version of a palette. It's basically instructions for the EMB so the EMB knows how to use color. So what you can do is load a neutral LUT into your EMB, take a screenshot of that, grade that screenshot, take the grade and apply that to the LUT. And now the EMB knows to make the colors look like this. And I also found a bit of code that lets you use a separate LUT for day and night and interiors. So the desert during the day can be bright and warm and the during the night can be dark and uh, cool and in the inside can be regular. Now, you've probably heard of HDR if you follow uh, technology, news, or you're pissed off at Rick Rubin or you've seen the little button on your phone that lets you take awful pictures. What it is, is the screen you're watching this on will have 256 shades from white to black. Actually mate, I'm watching this on a 10-bit OLED. Shut up. Shut up, I'm not talking to you. Now the problem is, the cones in our eyes can see 1,000 shades and the rods in our eyes can see a million shades and you know how you enter a dark room and your eyes adjust the adjustment of our eyes lets us see 1 billion shades. But your screen isn't going to show more than 256. Uh, actually mate, I'm watching this on a 12-bit reference monitor. What? No one cares. Shut up. Once something reaches that white point, 
it's not going to get any brighter. Once something reaches the dark point, it can't get any darker. So what games do now is they generate a massive amount of color information and then cleverly process that down into something that looks natural. Now clearly Bethesda found out about this about six years after everyone else. But fortunately, EMB has some magic fucking bullshit to deal with that. So when I'm doing post-processing, I like to bump my settings up far beyond the point where they're visually pleasing at all, get my settings, you know, mostly right, then dial it back and do my final adjustments. And when I went to do that for the ambient occlusion pass, I was really surprised how normal it made the faces look. So I've left the ambient occlusion relatively high because in the base game, Vegas is populated exclusively by mutant freaks. Uh, now, if you don't know what Bloom is, basically uh, every time I say Bloom, just imagine I'm saying Glow. The Bloom in the base game is way overdone to hide the terrible dynamic range. And by default, the EMB Bloom is a pretty good way of making everything look like the women in 60s Star Trek. Like whenever they cut to a woman and the screen goes hazy, which they would do, by the way, to imply that the focus puller had tripped over his own dick. There's a few problems. Uh, bloom should only affect bright areas. As it becomes more intense, it should become more white, and it should spill outwards from itself. Luckily, someone wrote a shader that will do that as long as you spend a good hour fucking around in the settings menu. And that's it for my EMB. I will include my working file, so if you agree with my methodology but disagree with my decisions, you can desecrate all I've wrought. Given the universal critical acclaim for Fallout 4 and 76, I want to bring the mechanical improvements that they made over to Fallout New Vegas. So let's add Sprint, which I tweaked to better match the Fallout 4 Sprint, but not entirely, because the Fallout 4 Sprint lets you run so fast that it kind of breaks the game. That's not a joke. I don't know how that would be a joke, but just so you know, that's not an example of what a joke sounds like. And we're adding a loop menu, a hold breath, and these fucking combat thingies. Never before in my life have I had to acknowledge the existence of these fucking combat thingies. And it brings me no pleasure to admit that they make combat feel a lot more responsive. And I'm using this complete massive ragdoll overhaul mod to not change anything except for these little hit reactions. And I'm not ever going to use grenades unless there is a hotkey for it, so let's add that. The Fallout 3 engine came from like this awkward half step between RPG and FPS. No one really knew what that was gonna shape up like. And as part of that, the combat AI is a bit fucked. They can dodge bullets and they just sort of all run towards you and if you snipe them, they will not react. So I was using a mod called Combat Enhancer to fix this, but then I noticed that in combat, enemies kept running around, going to grab weapons, not fighting, just running around picking up weapons. And if you entered a building, the entire building would just swarm towards you at once, and then you'd go out and visit the empty rooms. Uh, so I made a lighter version with Stewie's tweaks. If you want, I could make a standalone mod, but I won't actually make that. You should just use Stewie's tweaks. Now, as I understand it, immersion is a word used by the modding community to mean unnecessary dog shit. So let's delay the DLC so you don't end the opening cinematic with a closing dialogue boxes minigame. And let's scatter the pre-order packs about and make everybody stand normal. Oh, yes. Hopefully that helps somebody even as just like a sort of starting baseline. Just really what I wish I had known going in for the first time. Obviously this is just like a subjective list, but my opinion is the correct one. Uh, if you're absolutely livid about what I've done here, uh, obviously you can make your own modding decisions. Uh, and if you're even just far too angry to do that, I'm not familiar with any of the buttons beneath the YouTube videos, but I'm sure you will have no way of expressing that to me. Hopefully I'll write up my own little list to go with this video and I'll upload my settings files and my EMB and um, 
nothing else. You'd think at this point I would have learnt that it's good to come up with a conclusion for a video before you start filming it. But... And I think, you know, the only thing that's left to say is that war... No, I'm just kidding.